Beck, I can't believe that uh, we're getting this this expanded AI edition of um, of uh, of hyperspace, and it comes with all kinds of crazy and incredible collaborations. Normally, that means various artists. In this particular case, the artist is NASA. Um, so before <laughs> before we get into the playlist, <laughs> you're going to have to help me out here because that's a first. You got to help me out. We were shooting Galactic. We were shooting big. So, um, yeah, we teamed up with NASA and uh, OSK Design Studio, and uh, they let us have access to all this footage from their missions to the moon, Mars rover, Voyager, all these different, um, you know. And so they took the footage and... I don't, they kind of had, you know, they let us just have a run of, run of it and just, uh, you know, OSK put together a whole kind of visual for the album, kind of abstracting the otherness of space, you know, very scientific footage, you know, but uh, repurposing it for, for the sake of just sort of, you know, space dreaming outstanding grooves ai exploration edition album uh, we're talking about right here yeah so we have a sort of a loose theme of space right we do we have a loose theme of space but actually it's it's less loose than 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 that would suggest i mean the the, the playlist is dialed in i mean it's right there yeah you think it's okay yeah i love it oh come on we're taking fishing. in the cosmos we're taking in the cosmos we're taking in the cosmos how was it when mm-hmm. you um i mean obviously what gets captured in outer space, it conjures up huge curiosity amongst us mere mortals feet on the ground. And a lot of stuff is kept under wraps. I don't know whether that's just good PR. <laughs> like if we don't show people, they're going to want to see it even more. But you've obviously seen more than most now. And I wonder how it was kind of going through the footage with OSK and sort of and seeing like what you were going to use and I suppose what you kind of discovered, just to discover planets or galaxies. Yeah, you know, I kind of let them have at it because if they gave me the reins, it would take three years. I would get really deep into it. I would have just gone so deep. So they were sending me stuff and, you know, I mean, it's just, it's all kind of um, hard to process, you know, these images, these images of places we'll never get to go and worlds we'll never get to see. But um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's wild. I'm not, I'm not really a science person. My brother is very science minded. He's actually has a lot of friends over there at NASA. And, and uh, but I, but I have collaborated musically with NASA. I don't know if people know this. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't know this. Remind NASA me when has this an happened. Orchestra. That's NASA right. NASA has an orchestra. So they came out and did a couple of gigs with me. And uh, I actually got to sing with the NASA orchestra. When you're making your music and when you're actually starting to come up with ideas and songs and, and they ultimately become albums and projects, are you thinking visually at the same time? Because every time I've ever seen you live, I feel like it's, it's, such a partner- it's in such partnership with the music. It's not like, oh, I'll work that out later. Right. Yeah. I think on the tours, you know, these ideas kind of grow. It, it's, it's a lot of it working within your means, you know, the limitations. But I've had tours where I'll present five or six ideas of things I want to do. And it just would be impossible. We can't, there's no budget for it. So someday if I ever get the stadium tour, I have a lot of ideas saved up. Dude, I mean, it's, it's happening. I mean, the, the, the music that you continue to release is, I can't think of too many artists in my lifetime that have had, that have released music with such a level of quality and consistency. Um, you know, there'll be, al- there'll be albums and projects that, that, that people consider of yours that are fa- more favorite than others. Um, but I can't think of one. I can't think of a stinker. Can you? I can't really? think of a stinker. Really? I can't think of a stinker. Is there a stinker? I don't know. I go. I go back and forth. Sometimes I hear records and, and I go, "Oh no, that doesn't work." You know, like I'll, you you hear you hear you hear the music in new contexts. You know, like 2020 for me is a very different. Like I'm hearing things very different right now. Not just my music, other people's music. In what way? Can I ask? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if other people are going through this, but um, I'm hearing things in slightly different ears, you know. And there's certain music that suddenly sounds a lot older than it did. There's certain music that sounded contemporary for many years, you know. For uh, and now it suddenly I feel like we've sort of turned a little corner here. We're 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 going a little deeper into the digital, the digital. Um, 
realm. So I think, um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I think that's what I, th I think that's why certain music from the past becomes relevant for certain periods of time, and then it goes away, and then it suddenly serves another moment. And I think we're kind of going into another moment. Um, I know the '90s are are, are, are like a, a reference point right now. I know, isn't it mad? Everyone keeps referring to the '90s like it's classic rock. I mean, I remember when the '90s were the antidote to classic rock. Exactly. Yeah, they were like trying to kill classic rock i know it's so funny you know but i mean when eminem was public enemy number one and snoop dogg wasn't allowed into britain and now both of those two people could show up on a presidential podium and do all right you know what i mean um, exactly and and you see a, a radio playlist and it'll be like the bgs um no doubt air, air, air supply <laughs> no doubt nirvana like it's just all the same, all the same watch thing. out watch but, out here <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm waiting. Here comes Beck. There. You're on there. You're on that playlist, <laughs> I don't buddy. Know if I'm in there. I'm yeah, not, you are. Devil's yet. haircut, mate. The one you thought was really? the was the the one you thought was the outsider. That's an alternative classic. Yeah. I hate to break it to you. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I think that um, that was sort of the point of a lot of my early music was, you know, this is all music. You know, we we back then there were such divisions between genres and, and, and eras you know like you wouldn't put you wouldn't put the bgs and nirvana in the same place but somehow now that makes sense there's definitely no rules beck you mentioned it just before we played some kanye west and now speaking of no rules um here's an artist who continues to move in a space where there's there's no there's no seemingly there's zero rules um Oh God, I don't even know. I mean, I don't even, I can't even get into the presidential bid. That's just a whole other headache for me. Um, but do you have a, do you have a Kanye story? I mean, did, what was your favorite? Obviously you must've met him at the various circuses along the way. Yeah. I, I hadn't run into him too often. Um, it was funny. There's, you know, when I, when I, at the Grammys, when he came up on the stage to kind of make that point about um, when I won the award and I, I think he yeah, he he was he was disappointed about that, which I respected and I was fine with. But um, you know, later on, you know, I've run into him since, and um, I ran into him earlier this year, and he just turned around and pointed at me and said, "I like your music," and smiled <laughs> and then walked away. So, like it was a first uh, impression. Didn't you want to turn around and say, "Bro, you bum rushed my shit on stage a couple of years back"? Like, what the? Heck? You know, I. Here, well, here's here here's actually the truth is so he came up on stage and made that point and it was upsetting to a lot of people. Um, to me, I was a little confused. Um, I hold his music in, in high regard, but on the human side of it, you know, he was doing a recording session four days later with my dad. My dad was doing all the strings. He's making so, a record with the family lineage. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the music business, it's small, you know, and so I think of us as a f family. What were the early, um, those early alternative sort of tours like that Spiritualized would be on and The Verve and Tribe? I suppose I'm putting a Lollapalooza together in my head. Okay. So the bands that I toured with a lot, obvious were Radiohead because we kind of came out at the same time and we both had a loser song. And uh, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so we That's got true. put together a lot. Uh, it's the creep band and the loser guy. The loser and the guy. Yeah, that that was the first couple of years. Was you know, that's just we so, had competing. It's we had competing songs. It's so hilariously dismissive now when you consider the impact that both of you have had on music, and art, culture, and people's lives. That to consider that for a couple of years it was the creep and all loser. It was. <laughs> it was the loser guy and the creep guys. Yeah, absolutely. That was the whole story, and it was a very short book. Yeah, it's crazy. Someone who knows how to sample incredibly well and is one of the greatest producers of all time, in my opinion. Um, underrated as a producer, not underrated as a creative, is Q-Tip and A Tribe Called Quest. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love that you picked something off the last Tribe album, Official, um, which was recorded um, and fin whilst, whilst Fife was alive and finished, sadly, after his passing. So, um, you know, the space program and Tribe showing up on here, apart from being the theme, um, I know you're a Tribe fan, right? You got to be. I am. Yeah. He's a, in Q-Tips, he's a friend. He's like a... 
been really supportive and and generous with me for a long time and uh we've been mutual fans for a long time and have been sending music back and forth for years and Conversations. I don't think there's ever been anything that I know about, has there? Not Official? yet, but but you know, maybe How? sooner than later. How? I mean, you guys we've have. Been, uh, yeah, we've been sending music back and forth for years, so. So there's just, things. There's like little bits and bobs sitting around yeah, that need to be finished. Yeah, that's right. Do you forget sometimes that there are things that either you have in your position or that you kind of remember other people have of you of you in their position that. Because it's it's the music that doesn't get released that fascinates me. Kind of interesting, right? Yeah. I have a lot of stuff with Jack White. I mean, we, we probably have almost an album's worth now, just from the last two decades of hanging out. Did you ever work with Brian Eno? Did that ever happen? No, I never did. We have mutual friends, and uh, um, I can't believe that didn't happen. Yeah, I, I actually was thinking about that recently. I, I would have loved... I Maybe I was shy. Maybe I, I didn't feel... Um, emboldened or like or or worthy did you ever meet david bowie i did yeah uh no he i he wanted me to do a remix and i remember i was um i was like getting out of the shower or something and and uh my girlfriend said david bowie's on the phone (laughs) 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 okay (laughs) and uh and uh, it was the greatest conversation. We talked for 40, 30, 40 minutes. It was like I never wanted it to end. It was magic. He was the most um, uh, just uh, like like the amount of things we covered was just, it was incredible. It was like uh, the most charming, erudite, uh, fertile imagination like every like we just went through everything and he was right there and there wasn't anything i could we could you know talk about that he didn't know something about it was it was, it was wild <laughs> 